Game Shot Radio is property of Game Shot, a company of Red Planet LLC. All rights reserved. Executive producer, Andy Hodges. For live broadcast booking information, syndication, or advertising, email info at gameshot.com. All comments expressed on the show are not necessarily those of Game Shot, Red Planet LLC, its advertisers, guests, or syndication affiliates. All music is licensed by ASCAP and BMI. Recordings of this broadcast prohibited without prior written consent. And welcome back to Game Shout Radio. This is Captain Maverick along with Sexy Josh Britt and Soul Rip. We're so glad to have you with us today on Game Shout Radio. Yeah! I can see you're all excited. Josh? Soul Rip? Yo, yo, what's up? How you guys doing? How's it going, everyone? Well, we have a blast ahead for us today, guys. I mean, we have a lot of fun going on. Uh, first of all, I would like to recognize we have a visitor in the studio with us here. Uh, you see this guy sitting back here in my studio with me? You know, this funny-looking guy sitting behind me, this student from Muskegon Community College. His name is Gary Thomas. I want to welcome Gary in, uh, in uh, joining us today. He is... Uh, uh, he's, he's actually uh, kind of watching us and seeing how we put on the show and uh, uh, doing a, well, he's actually interviewing the old Maverick here, uh, the very old Maverick here. Uh, he, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, doing this for a, a school project, and yeah, hopefully he'll get an A on this one. <clears throat> well, he's interviewing you, so obviously uh, their, their uh, prerequisites aren't that high. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Sing. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, gosh, excuse me while I, oh, gosh, let me adjust the, uh, okay, now, well, listen, let's tell you a little bit about what we got ahead for you today. Uh, we had a great time this week as, uh, as Islander and I kind of snuck on over to Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, we went over to see uh, Gary and the rest of the gang at Muskegon Community College, and and, and I'm going to tell you all about the uh, guest appearance at Game Shout uh, at the Halo 3 celebration at Muskegon Community College. It was an awesome blast. I'll tell you all about that. Plus, in Los Angeles, we got some fun going on this weekend. It started yesterday, and it's going on right now. The, uh, the greatest shredders of the world are out competing in Target's Guitar Hero Contest. You guys, oh man, I wish I could be there now. I wish Josh could be there now. He'd just tear them all up. And then there's uh, some interesting news uh, with, uh, well, good Xbox 360's uh, uh, holiday game bundle console package. Uh, some stuff going on there. And, well, of course, we've got the wacky news from around the world. To, well, we got a special guest going to be on today. We'll, we'll talk more about that later. It's Soul Rift, he's... He's going to give you a uh, little insight, his review of the Microsoft Sidewinder mouse. He got all excited about this. Plus, he's got, along with the PC, uh, the PlayStation 3 news, uh, the 40 for 400 and more PS3 goodies. Sony is selling the Fab Labs to Toshiba and more news from around the globe and the gaming news. Josh, you, you have a little bit of news uh, over there as well. Uh, I didn't get a chance to, to get all of your, uh, your your paperwork on the, or all of your news on the board there. Uh, what is it you've got in, the, uh, in store for us today, too? Well, I've got some rumor control going on here with the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive, plus Sony uh, PlayStation 3 price cuts. Uh, I got it all right here. Let me talking about some more about that. Plus, um, hey, we got some uh, uh, news reports from September sales figures on all of the consoles. Quite interesting, and yet not surprising at the same time. I'll talk more about that, and you'll you'll want to know more about that when we get to that. It's really really some interesting stuff, and I got I got a few other things you know kicking around here, but uh, we'll we'll get to that in a little bit here. Well, question, Josh, did you uh, s- did you stay up late last night? Because it looks like you're a little peaked today. Uh, you weren't up playing games again last night, were you? Actually, no. Uh, surprisingly, I went to bed early. Um, well, relatively early, <laughs> considering who I am. But uh, um, no, no. I, I, you know, I, I did accidentally sleep in a little late today. 
Um, both the girlfriend and I were like, whoa, what what the hell happened here? I don't know what happened. We just, it, it was just one of those mornings where it was just like, didn't want to get up. Ah, uh, see, see how it is. Uh-huh, well, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, see. With the girlfriend. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, you, you just go ahead and. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we we, we won't uh, go any I'll, further with we'll, that one. We'll just smile and nod, smile and nod. Well, yeah, I mean, come go. on. I mean, it was the first night that I mean, this is the first night in a while. We did we did go you know to the bar last night. We opted instead to play instead of playing Halo Three like we normally do. Uh, we we, did, we opted to go to the bar. Twenty five cent drafts. Hell yeah! <laughs> of course we're gonna go to that. Uh, let's see, there you go. Now there's the there's the whole deal. Now now Solvrift, he's looking bright eyed and bushy tailed this 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 afternoon. As a matter of fact, Solvrift, uh, I understand you were like wowing last night. Yeah, last night, well, yesterday afternoon, I finished off uh, .hack GU Volume Three. Uh, what's the subtitle on that one again? Gosh, I can never remember them. Redemption. There we go. I finished off Redemption last night, so I'm going to be ooh, putting ooh, up the review. I can't of wait that. to see your review. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked it. I really liked the the whole Hack GU game series, and uh, they they have a lot of bonus features. Actually, it's gonna take me a while to finish it off because after you finish the game, you, you unlock a lot of bonus features that tie in to the original anime dot hack roots and a bunch of other stuff. So there's a lot of cool stuff I'm gonna be checking out before I finish up the review, just to make sure it's it's all complete and all good. But then after that, yeah, I was uh, wowing. Taking my my guild and I went to uh, the Circuit Shrine Cavern. Mm. Ooh, that sounds like a blast. Well, I, I finally finished up with the, uh, the the game and review of, uh, of, of Dragon Blade Wrath of Fire. It's a, uh, a, a well, an, an interesting game that, well, it's kind of a, well, it's a button masher for the Wii. Imagine, if you will, taking a Wii remote, holding it out in front of you, and swinging it around wildly. <laughs> well, that's what this game is all about. Now, my whole right arm is as sore as heck, but... Ah, it's all built up and, and getting more and more muscular. Of course, my left arm is like nothing. And and, <laughs> and, and the tough part with this game is that I kept getting the uh, the, the Nunchuck uh, Wii Remote cord caught up in the hands and like it was. Oh man, it was fun. Anyhow, you get a chance. Go check out the uh, the review right on uh, on GameShot.com. And hey, if you guys want to chat with us. You can always do so. We're uh, I'm, well. I'm hanging out uh, in the radio channel on the IRC Network GamesNet. That's GamesNet in the radio channel. So you come on in, say hi, uh, drop by on GameShout.com, join us uh, in the uh, the forums. Uh, love to have, love to have a few chats with you there. And uh, well, let's move on into uh, into the news here because we, we we got a yeah, lot of yeah. stuff going on and we've got little time. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You gonna give a shout out to anyone in the IRC right now? Okay, okay, okay. We'll give a little shout out to somebody in the IRC. Uh, one of my buddies kind of helps me with the news now and then, and, and uh, he's he's. Off. Yep, Officer Patrick. Officer Patrick. Yeah, Pet. He's. Uh, he, he likes to point out uh, some of the oddities that are going on in the world. As a matter of fact, he's helped us with a news story today for the Wacky News that we put somebody very special on the investigation of. So, um, as a matter of fact, we have the bloodhounds out there doing the investigation work. As you heard in the background, we got those bloodhounds. They're out there working on it right now. All right, let's jump on over to uh, Wednesday's adventure. We had a blast. Let's tell you what's going on. We went out to Muskegon Community College, Islander and I, and we made a uh, guest appearance. Now, we went out to the Halo 3 celebration. Microsoft was there. We had several hundred students there. Now, understand what's going on at Muskegon Community College is there... Uh, the the professor there, his name is Jeff Stipes, and he is working on a program. He's trying to get it open by uh, by the fall semester next year. And in fact, I'll tell you what. Instead of me telling you about it, let's hear it right from well, sorry, Jeff, from the horse's mouth. I'm with Jeff Stipes with the uh, Muskegon Community College. Jeff, glad to have you with us today. We're at the Halo 3 celebration. <laughs> and Jeff, 
You're working on a uh, program here at the college. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Yes, we are right in the middle of developing a degree program in, in gaming. Uh, the, the program will have three distinct tracks. Uh, the track that will probably come online the first will be what we're calling the design track. And basically it's geared at the person who is going to be the vision individual, the person who sees the game, or who identifies the game. It's a, a strong in writing, uh, as well as a, a good mix of courses in uh, types of things they would need to have exposure to, where from history to geology to geography to criminal investigation, just to get a person ready to come up with those new great ideas for the next games we want to see. The other two tracks, one will be a graphic design track, uh, may, actually what we're calling media arts and graphic design. Uh, the third track then will be a major hardcore programming track, and we're, we're not talking about lightweight, we're talking about you know, the C++, the C Sharps, we're talking about the console programming, DirectX 10, the whole nine yards on that. So a rather aggressive approach on the programming. Our hope is that the, the center track, the one I first mentioned, the one that will come on the, in, um, if all goes well, come in next semester, will be an applied or an associate of science degree where it will actually transfer to a four-year degree. We want the person to be able to go to work as well as go to the four-year school. With the graphic, we're working with a local four-year school that has a very high reputation in graphics and we're looking to do a two plus two for that person. And then of course the programming track is a standalone two-year program. But I know what interests you, all three of them are school to work if you want to. That's the goal. Get them out of school and put them right to work. Exactly. That's outstanding. Sounds like a great job. Jeff, thanks for joining us Thank on Game Shot Radio. Thank you. So we had a chance to uh, to attend this Halo 3 celebration. And, and first of all, I want you to understand, guys, this is a great opportunity for the school. It's a great opportunity for students to be able to get into a program that is going to actually help them develop talents that are, is, is going to get them not only through a, a, a great structured class program, but it's going to get them right out into the workforce. And, and I think that's the coolest part about this program. So for, of course, all, all you uh, gaming companies that are listening to Game Shout Radio, I want you to keep that in mind. Muskegon Community College could be a fresh pool of candidates uh, very soon for you to draw from and, and uh, utilize some, some great talent. I know of a couple of indie companies that are already sniffing around uh, at that pool and already looking at pulling up some of that talent. So uh, keep that in mind. But we got a chance to uh, to go out there and play around with them. And, and, well, naturally, being Game Shout and being who we are and not wanting to be, well, outdone by Microsoft, we decided to go out there and bring a lot of prizes and, and, and shirts and, and, and reviewed games to, to give away and well, head on over to GameShot.com and check out my blog. Uh, we uh, got a lot of pictures up there of, uh, of what we did. Uh, we held a trivia contest. And a matter of fact, Josh, your, uh, your trivia questions, I, I had Josh do the trivia questions. They were awesome, absolutely awesome. I should have had you do a few extra because we uh, ended up with a few uh, uh, um, hardware components that uh, the uh, the college and that Microsoft wanted us to give away as well, and uh, uh, the fact the the, the uh, academic uh, representative from Microsoft, Josh, he uh, grabbed the, the the trivia questions out of my hand at the end of the contest and said, "Can I have these? Can I keep these? Can I bring them back to Microsoft?" <laughs> well, maybe maybe we should do something here on uh, on our station. A little bit of a trivia show, see what we can do here, see what people know. We'll, we'll, I think we should figure something out with that. I don't know anything. Yeah? Hey, well, of course, Solrif, you don't. If we did a World of Warcraft trivia, that'd be a different story. Uh, you know, we, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be a whole different story. But um, he, was, he was really impressed with the questions, and uh, I was impressed with, uh, with the answers. Now, uh, Josh, there were a lot of people that got a lot of wrong answers, but there were a lot of people that got a lot of right answers, too. So we had a lot of fun. We gave away just about a thousand, almost a thousand dollars worth of, well, actually it was, about a thousand dollars worth of prizes uh, out at Muskegon Community College, and we have several hundred new listeners uh, to Game Shout Radio. So I want to, uh, I want to again, thank Muskegon Community College for inviting Game Shout to be out there and uh, for your hospitality. Uh, I also want to uh, let you guys know that we have been invited uh, out there to, uh, 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 we have been out there, uh, or invited to be out there 
to uh, join the uh, uh, actually a, a quite an austere board of, uh, of of individuals on a uh, a panel of, of doctors and and, uh, and other individuals professors that are uh, a discussion panel that uh, are going to be discussing violence in video games. Uh, I'm so sorry, Jack Thompson is not going to be on that discussion panel. So, gee, sorry. <laughs> but, well, that sounds uh, like it might be some fun. Hmm. Yeah, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be? So, in November or December, they are going to be having a discussion panel involving uh, violence in video games. And, and though I can take it either way... Um, I will be uh, part of the uh, uh, the protagonist uh, with regard to violence actually not being an issue in uh, the effect that it has on our children in video games. After all, look at the number of years that that my sons have blown up their father in uh, in Red Faction and 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 in in, in Half Life and, and all these other games that they've blown up their old man in and. They haven't gone out and sat in a clock tower uh, in, in some clock tower with a rifle or anything, you know. And they're still blowing up their dad in video games. <laughs> Nothing oh, wrong with man. that. Is there? <laughs> Red Faction <laughs> really brings back memories. Yeah, doesn't it though? I know. That's a long it's time ago, too. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that the best? So, bottom line is, hey, look, it it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and I want to thank Muskegon Community College for everything they've done for us and in, uh, in, in allowing us to come out there and be a part of the celebration. Um, and we look forward to partnering with them on a lot more things in the future. And, uh, well, we had a great time. And uh, as I said in, uh, in my blog, MCC rocks, guys. You want to see all the pictures? Head over to GameShot.com and, and take a look at them. Uh, let's move on up. We've got a lot of stuff to go over here, and uh, I think right now, Solrip, why don't we turn the time over to you to uh, to go over uh, some of the uh, goodness news, uh, news. that yeah. is. Do you want to go news, or do you want to uh, start uh, out with the Sidewinder, man? Uh, I want to do news first. Oh, I'm going to save the Sidewinder oh. for later, because everyone wants to hear about the Sidewinder. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. You always save the best for last. Okay, well, let's good. jump on into the news. All right, hey Josh, you still playing World of Warcraft these days? Uh, I yes and no. I I mean I know a while back I had announced that I had gotten back into World of Warcraft. However, with the release of Halo Three, uh, <laughs> that promptly got shunted to the side. So unfortunately, I'm not playing any WoW anymore at this time. Perhaps soon I'll get back into it. I don't know. I might just wait off until the expansion pack. Well, maybe the 2.3 update will entice you to come back into the game. Uh, it's their next major patch update for World of Warcraft, and it's got a whole bunch of really interesting features that's uh, been causing quite a clamor on the uh, the game forums and amongst a lot of the players. Uh, of course, they're going to be adding a new dungeon, uh, Zola Mon, which is kind of like the uh, Zol Garub 10 Men, or uh, was it 20 Men, this is now 10 Men, outdoor dungeon, as opposed to one of these indoor cave dungeons. Um, which is going to be, again, featuring a lot of trolls and stuff, uh, but for level 70 content. And they're also making a really interesting uh, change that I'm personally looking forward to. Uh, they're going to be awarding heroic badges. Uh, no news yet on whether primal nethers will also be awarded, but at least heroic badges, you'll be able to pick them up in Karazhan and in Zul Amman. So you don't have to grind heroics to get your heroic badges. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good uh, addition to the game in the next patch. I also cool. heard that they're they're doing some some model updates for 2.3 for some of the druidic uh, you know class and forms. I hadn't heard about that. I hadn't heard about that. Um, is it just like their armor or their actual shapes? Their shape shift. Um, it's it's most. I think it's mostly just aesthetic. Uh, you know, changes here and there. Um. I mean, I'm trying to pull that back up here as as I speak, but I mean, just some of the things that they're doing. Uh, they were pointing out like the uh, oh, what was it? It was mo ma mo I'm sorry, mostly and mainly things that we're just going to have to do with the Torin uh, shape shifting, uh, uh -huh. specifically, more specifically, like their cat uh, form. Uh, if yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find the picture so I can show you what what I'm talking about here, they're just slight little tweaks here and there. Um, to like the dire bear, um, worgen, um, uh, and their travel forms. 
Yeah. So we, we might see some, like, just aesthetic updates to the changes. Because a lot of the players were complaining that Torrens had uglier uh, <laughs> versions of these forms than the Night Elves did. <laughs> yeah, the Night Elf did have the, the better forms, I thought. Better shape shift. Well, you know, there is there's also some uh, interesting gameplay changes coming in. Uh, two highlights that I really wanted to share. First of all, for Hunters, uh, I used to play a Hunter, and I actually gave up and switched to Warlock, but... Uh, Hunters, there's rumors. It's actually not officially in the patch notes yet, but uh, posts from Blizzard staff members in the forums are suggesting that they're going to tweak the range system so that hunters will no longer have a dead zone between their melee and ranged attacks for people to kind of abuse that during PvP. Uh, so that's a real big news for hunters out there. And the other big class change that I saw is that mages are going to get uh, a spell similar to the Warlock um, Ritual of Souls, where you summon an item and everyone can put, pull a health stone out of it. They're going to be getting a Ritual Excellent. of Refreshment. Ritual of Refreshment, and they'll be able to summon something that you'll be able to pull out, uh, presumably, food and water from. <laughs> so, yeah. That well, will be cool for my, my mage and my, uh, and, and my, uh, my logs. Yes, insert jokes about mages being uh, water coolers here, and then uh, yes. continue on with the news. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh, what do you got about the, the September stats on sales? I, I saw some pretty interesting figures in that list. Well, one of the most interesting parts of it is uh, who took first place that month. Um, we, we all know that the Nintendo Wii has been taking first place in sales for the last year, basically. I mean, ever since it was released, it's been number one. The Nintendo DS has been, uh, you know, nailing number two. Uh, 360 has been nailing number three, uh, with PSP and Sony PlayStation 3 both trailing behind. Now, here's an interesting turn of events, yet not so interesting when you take into consideration what came out in September. That's right, Microsoft Xbox 360 uh, sold 6.8 million uh, in in consoles, uh, it, it just it was a staggering 1.36 billion dollars uh, in in sales here. Um, yeah, we're we're looking at quite a jump from the th number three spot to the number one spot. But can we guess why this happened? I think it's it's pretty much uh, you know by itself a a, a a shoe in here. Halo 3, of course, was released, and I know it was released at the end of the month. However. That's how big that game was. It, it nailed so many sales on the Microsoft Xbox 360. Uh, Halo 3 itself came out at number one in software sales with 3.3 million. Uh, it, you know, in uh, um, not in sales, I think. Uh, no, it was just units. I apologize. Uh, I mean, the game did 170 million dollars on its first day. That's the most money any kind of visual media has ever done. That was a a straight up uh, record right there for any kind of visual media beating out Spider-Man 3, Harry Potter um, not just video games but movies as well uh, all the Star Wars but it, it even beat out oh yeah porn. all the Star Wars it did beat out porn I don't know any porn that sold that much in one day <laughs> yeah who That's buys right. porn um, anymore though that's what the internet's for exactly. I mean wait a minute <laughs> uh, anyways um <laughs> So yeah, we're seeing we're seeing uh, the 360 uh, pretty much slamming down everybody in uh, in sales for September. Uh, whether or not that's going to leak over into this month of October, we're going to have to see how things go by the end of the month. Uh, I'll have an update on that in November for you guys. But it's just an interesting little leap of uh, of, of faith here uh, on on Microsoft's uh, behalf. You know putting everything they got into Halo 3 and, of course, coming out uh, ahead in the game. We're, are we really that surprised? Not really. I mean, if you look at the software sales, uh, Microsoft has Halo 3 on there, Madden NFL 08, uh, I'm sorry, not at Madden NFL 08. Yeah, that, that's on there too, I apologize. And Skate and Bioshock. Um, four games in the top ten software sales for this month, whereas PS3 only has one, which is Heavenly Sword, at the a number ten slot. And uh, number two was We Play with the with the Wii Mote, and then the DS had the number three spot with Legend of Zelda: Phantom Hourglass. So, um, oh, not to mention that you know Metroid Prime Three Corruption had come out that month for the Wii, and unfortunately that is still sitting at a number seven spot for the month. Um, not really pushing as many Wii consoles as uh, as uh, Nintendo was hoping. Um, but come on, when compared to you know what what a juggernaut of of Halo 3 is, 
It's really not surprising. Oh, and that 3.3 is across all three of those uh, uh, those different versions that you had: the regular, the legendary, and the collector's edition. So, oh, but, but, quite an but, interesting turn of events. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We just got a new game for review for the Wii that's going to turn this whole thing all the way around. It's going to rock your world. It's Rockstar's Table Tennis. I got it. I'm ready to play. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see, because I did like Rockstar's Table Tennis on the Xbox 360. I was a big fan of that. It was. It was good. And it was, it was, it was easy to pick up, easy to get into. Uh, even my mother, who is but not the most gaming... wait till you uh, see it on the Wii. Yeah. I mean, it she was, worse, even got right? into it, so... Yeah, I was gonna say it's not as it's not as pretty. The control well, scheme is what's really kicking it. It's That's not in right. high def on the Wii. No, no, but but on the Wii you have control. I mean, it's 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 you you play in it with with the paddles, man, and it's it's like you are you are the paddle dude. Okay, I mean it is great. I mean it's, it's well, so yeah, so so you don't want to see it on the Wii. You want to play it on the Wii. You, f- you want to feel it. See it on, it on the, the 360. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's true. But um, yeah, that is. The, the, see, understand. Right now, it seems to me that a lot of the uh, the the, man, the uh, publishers, the developers, are trying to come up with new and interesting ways to utilize the feel of the Wii remote, and and you know, like uh, like the the sword games and Zelda and. and uh, and and the new crossbow uh, in, in, in the Zelda games and, and the, um, uh, the 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 ping pong paddles and so I mean there's 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 going to be some very new and interesting ways to use it. Uh, yeah, I but I like the first person shooter styles too. I yeah, stick with but my original assessment. however, however the the new table tennis is nothing new for the Wii. We had this with Wii Tennis on the Wii Sports package that came with the Wii. So it's technically not anything new in how we, you know, play the game or use the controller. It, it's just it's the same idea, but it's just a different, you know, different can of paint on there. I stick with my original assessment that the we it's all gimmicky controls. It's not content driven. It's just gimmicky. Oh well, don't get me wrong. Uh, I mean, it's, no, it's I, it, it may be a little gimmicky, but it's still fun. There is still a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I agree. It. It, it could be fun. I agree it's fine, I don't know, but... Man, it's just not the kind of fun I like to have on my console. Oh, okay, okay, well listen, you thought that Guitar Hero was gimmicky, alright? And and look at where it's gone, okay? Target right now is holding at the Eve for All in Los Angeles, at the uh, at the Los Angeles Coliseum in the... Uh, let's see, I believe it is in the East... Excuse me, the South Exhibit Hall. Uh, in the Los Angeles Convention Center, Los Angeles, California, uh, from Thursday, October 18th through Saturday, the 21st, uh, they are holding what is known as the, uh, let's see, what are they called? The, uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, well, it's, okay, here we go. It's, well, it's, 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 a, great it's, title. it's a chance, it's a contest. <laughs> oh. Basically. Gamers are going to get a chance to, to to play Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock before it's released on the 28th. And Target is giving a true Guitar Hero, thanks to Activision Red Octane, of course, a chance to rock at the E for all as industry judges will score the event for accuracy and performance. The winner is going to walk away with more than $3,000 in cash and Target gift cards. Three grand, dude. Three grand. You could buy a car for three grand. Well, not with Target gift cards, but anyhow. So, Hot Wheels <laughs> seriously, car. yeah, really, Hot Wheels car. Um, seriously though, uh, this is an opportunity for all of you shredders, Guitar Hero shredders. It's not a fad anymore to get out there and, and show them what you got. A lot of people are going to go out there in in uh, this this final showdown and have a uh, 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 you know the great costumes and and. The the real the uh, the showdown is going to be on the main stage on Saturday tomorrow. So this is this is going to be very very cool, and and you're going to be able to get on your you know your costume and and get up on that main stage and show everybody what you got. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Guitar Hero Rocks. But Josh, you are a gar- Guitar Hero fa- uh, maniac. I mean, a couple years ago, watching you. Rock and Guitar Hero, the the film we did, I mean, that was such a blast. 
No, it was definitely a lot of fun when we got a, a hands-on on, on uh, the Guitar Hero 2 before it was even released. Um, there's a, there was a nice video of me looking like an ass on uh, <laughs> on Guitar Hero 2 playing the uh, playing with the guys. You did over not at look like an ass. You were. You 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 had a great time. Uh, you you were. Uh, I think you were keeping up with uh, with the guys there. The, I mean, you, you did just as well as he did. I, it was great. In fact, there's a there's a, a at uh, I believe it was dig dot com. There's a at gaming news Guitar Hero three version. Uh, there's a, a Devil Went Down to Georgia Guitar Hero three Devil Went Down, down to Georgia. Uh, it's just been released over there. So it's kind of cool too. But yeah. Well, um, speaking of. Speaking of Guitar Hero 3, I got an interesting little little tidbit of news here for anyone who's looking forward to getting their hands on the uh, the latest uh, version, or at least a demo to play it. Uh, for anyone who hasn't picked up the uh, latest issue of uh, Official Xbox Magazine, there is a uh, nice little demo on there for Guitar Hero 3, which isn't available on Xbox Live Marketplace, but here's an interesting little fact. If you burn this disc you will be able to play it on regular 360s. Now, I don't know how this is this works. It's not a pirate version. It's not like a, a, a weird kind of copy, but apparently if you burn this disc with the... Uh with this uh, with this track list, you can give it off to a friend and, uh, you know, pass it around, give it to some people to play. Um, uh, so I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to see how this works and get my hands on it, so we can have some uh, some demo copies floating around here on the on the free world. But uh, check it out. You can you can play some Pat Benatar's "Hit Me with Your Best Shot," "Lay Down" by Priestess, "Even Flow" from Pearl Jam, "Scorpions," "Rock You Like a Hurricane," and uh, "The Metal" by Tenacious D. So um, quite Josh, an interesting. Don't little, do that uh, again, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that's definitely something everyone can get into. Uh, definite E for everyone. Uh, speaking of E for everyone, Soul Rift. Pass it over oh, to yes. you, man. Speaking of the E for everyone uh, expo at LA, there's another game uh, on display that I just heard about. Uh, for the people who like the more content-driven games instead of the gimmicky things, uh, there's the new Civilization Revolution for all three consoles. It, it caught me, and then when Saurus started up talking, like literally. Uh, so you want me just to start talking? Yeah, just just start off from the very beginning again. Oh, I've forgotten everything I said. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I can improvise. I can improvise. <laughs> all right, so uh, did you just, is, it, is it already recording? Yeah, it's been recording. It just start out from the beginning there. Um, so, Solra, speaking of E for Everyone, uh, you know, how's yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of the E for Everyone uh, convention in L.A., uh, there's another game on display for people who like the more content-driven, uh, less gimmicky games. There's the new Civilization Revolution for all three consoles, for the Xbox 360, PS3, and the Wii. Um, it's based, of course, on Sid Meier's famous Civilization series, and uh, from the reports I've heard, it's it's actually uh, pretty good, pretty faithful to the original uh, Civilization ser saga series, whatever, but uh, a bit slimmed down. It's not quite as uh, intense as the, the slower, more intense PC strategic experience, although it does look really nice. The, the look is significantly, I guess, more console-like. Awesome, too cool. But now, Civilization uh, on the on the PC versus Civilization on the console. I mean, it's like, you know, I I don't know, I don't know. I, with me, it's like, give me the mouse and the keyboard. Otherwise, I'm like losing my mind, you know. And and well, speaking of mouse, I want to hear what you thought of that Sidewinder mouse, Silver. I, I really, I mean, that thing is the wildest looking mouse I have ever seen in my life. It, it looks wild. It, 
You said the Sidewinder is back. Yes, time for the hardware review here on Game Shout Radio. Uh, I've been waiting to do a hardware review here for a long time, and uh, I'm really excited because... <laughs> oh, you know how much I love mice. I'm always going through mice like once every six months, and uh, I, I just I can never get enough of a mouse. And I've been looking for the perfect mouse for such a long time. But you know, the Sidewinder is back. Uh, way back when Microsoft had the Sidewinder series of uh, game pads and joysticks, and uh, the the Sidewinder brand name kind of died out because you no know, PCs just weren't using those sort of controllers anymore. But you know, like like Microsoft says, the Sidewinder is back, and they are releasing now the Sidewinder gaming mouse. Uh, it's a really, really cool looking mouse. It's pretty mean looking, actually. It's got a lot of sharp edges. Uh, really, I don't know how to describe it, because you, you, know, you got to go to the website. Go to GameShot.com. Check out the pictures of the Sidewinder gaming mouse. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it looks it looks really fantastic. And of course, it's got these cool, uh, these two lights on the bottom, kind of shining uh, out the tail to, to look like evil eyes or something to scare away your opponents who are watching you mouse around. Um, but performance wise though it's it's really spectacular. Uh, it's it's it follows pretty much the standard form factor for the mouse. You've got left click, right click, uh, the wheel that you can click and two thumb buttons, uh, most of which can be mapped to various functions. Uh, I of course use the, the shift and control on the two thumb buttons and in turn use shift and control often to, to jump and crouch in first person shooters or whatever else you want to macro them to. Uh, it's got really uh, the the latest generation of laser tracker for uh, figuring out where you're pointing, and it tracks just about everything. I've I've actually had some trouble tracking different surfaces with Logitech's G7 laser mouse. Uh, there was a lot of surfaces that it couldn't see, and the mouse would move erratically. And the Sidewinder can see everything I've put it on, and moves very crisply. It's also got uh, on-the-fly DPS. Uh, DPI changing. Uh, this is not new. The G7 also had this feature where you could change the DPI uh, or the resolution, how fast the mouse cursor would move. And uh, so the, the Sidewinder also has it, but it has a new feature, which is this LCD that actually shows you uh, how many DPI you've actually set it to. So you can reconfigure your, your mouse in the, the mouse settings to set up three different DPI settings. And of course, there's three buttons on top of the mouse that each light up with a, a bright LED to show you which uh, button is being selected at the time. And then the, the, the LCD panel lights up and shows you numerically, you know, is it 200, 400, 800, uh, up to 2,000 DPI to, to change the precision on the fly, which is really cool because if you're playing a, I don't know, a first-person shooter, you might have it on a very high DPI setting. Uh, so you have the really fast twitching so you can move around, turn around, and then as soon as you see your target, you want to have a nice lower DPI so you can aim in, get that precision aiming, and then maybe if you pick up a sniper rifle, you want to put it really low and have the really fine movements so you can snipe someone right in the head, and it's just really nice to be able to change that on the fly. It's also got another cool feature for first-person shooters, which is uh, an automatic turnaround feature. You you calibrate this to one of your buttons, you, you, you map it to one of the buttons, you go into the game, you hit it to calibrate it, and all you have to do is, is just turn around a full 360 inside your game, and then it's calibrated just like that. And then anytime you want to do a, a 180 degree turn, you want to see what's right behind you, you hit the button, the mouse will signal to the game just the right amount of mouse movement, like an instant, really fast movement, and it spins your character around 180 and you're facing right behind you. Uh, it, it's a pretty cool feature, but given that it's got the adjustable DPI settings and you can set it up really high, I found it easier just to turn around uh, I know, 180 on my own. Because uh, you really only have the four programmable buttons. You, you can't reprogram the left click to be the macro button or anything like that, which is kind of useful because usually you need to left click stuff. And uh, so you've only got the right click and the mouse wheel and the two thumb buttons. And I kind of use all of those in most of my games. The other cool feature it had was this uh, on the fly macro command. You've got a, another, a third thumb button that's kind of further forward from the other two. Uh, it's out of reach so you can't accidentally hit it. But if you push it and then you can hit any button that you've already mapped. Say I, I hit the button I've got uh, control. I, I'm not using control right now. I can macro. You just hit the macro button. You hit the button on the mouse. You type in something on the keyboard, you know, one key, uh, even a set of keys. It records the macro right on the fly. You hit the macro button again, and it's saved to your mouse. So even while you're playing the game, you can record and create these macros and uh, use them right there in the game. And then once you're done, you can go back, and it saves all the macros, and you can, you know, 
change them, change your controls, put them in for different games, have uh, application-specific settings. Uh, you know, pretty standard fare. Uh, as far as being a gaming mouse, you know, it also comes with a lot of really cool features. I mean, one of the, the, the popular things these days for gaming mouse is uh, the weights. You can change the weight of the mouse by putting weights into it. Um, the Sidewinder does have this feature. You can pop out a little drawer in the middle of the mouse and then put up to three weights. And this thing comes with four different ones, uh, three at 10 grams, one at 5 grams. So you can set the weight of the mouse uh, anywhere to plus 5 to plus 30 grams. Uh, personally, you know, it's it's quite it's not exactly a light mouse. Um, it's not like the PlayStation 3 controller, which is much lighter than the mouse. Uh, and so I found it wasn't necessary to actually put any weights in to get a good feel. But uh, you know, some of my friends have tried it out, and they say, oh, it's better with more weights and less. Uh, and of course, it, it's really up to your preference, and that's what this whole customization is all about. And it, these weights are stored in this cool cord anchor, which is like this little brick. It's, uh, feels heavy. It's got a good feel to it, and you can anchor the cor mouse cord into one side of it. It's actually quite useful for keeping the cord off of the side. It stores all of your weights. It also stores, get this, it stores extra mouse feet. Now, if you've used mice as much as I do, you know that the number one problem with a mice, with a mouse, is that the feet get worn out or get dirty or stuff gets stuck in. Because, you know, they have these little grooves, right, and they glue in these thin Teflon feet into the bottom of the mouse, and, and stuff gets caught up in them, and they just wear out and start scraping against your mousing surface. Number one problem with mice is the feet wear out and the mouse just doesn't glide around. So, you know, the, the Sidewinder gaming mouse totally circumvents this entire problem by replacing sort of the glued in Teflon feet with five replaceable circular mice feet. And you can just pop in mice feet of different s textures, of different surfaces, based on how fast or slow you want the mouse to move. It comes uh, in out of the box with the gray feet, which are kind of like a middle of the road uh, smooth, but not gliding right off the edge of your table smooth. Uh, which is, I find it's pretty useful for general mousing. Um, it, it glides, I've, I've got, of course, the, the Funk gaming surface that we reviewed earlier on, and the two with the gray feet work really well for moderate use, uh, especially games like, say, World of Warcraft. I was playing that a lot, and uh, you don't want too much smoothness because you're mostly clicking on icons. Um, it also comes with the black, like, super slick feet, and those are really fun. You put those on with the super slick uh, funk surface, and I mean, it's like the mouse and, and is just gliding on air. Uh, it, it's a really, really slick feeling. It's really incredible. And it also has the white feet, which are a lot rougher than normal feet, and yet they're not rough enough to scrape the surface. They're just rough enough to give you some good friction, which are great for more precise functions. Say you're, I don't know, doing photo editing, or you need something where you're making small, precise movements with the mouse. The white feet coupled with the on-the-fly lower DPI settings give you a very, very accurate mouse for a lot of different uh, features. So anyways, overall, you know, the, the, the Sidewinder gaming mouse is fantastic. It feels nice. The uh, mouse wheel, it's got this big, thick metal mouse wheel. That's, it glides when you want to uh, scroll really fast. It's got the good clicking for uh, precise you know, clicks for changing weapons or whatever. Uh, you know, I just can't go wrong with this mouse. I think I finally found the mouse that I really like. Uh-oh. <laughs> Soul Rift has finally found his main mouse. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you know what? It's going to be a challenge now to, to find uh, new mice to, to dethrone this every six months, or maybe I'm going to actually stick with this for, who knows, maybe a whole year. Oh, that's scary. I haven't seen... Now, look. Everybody, I want you to know that I've never seen Solbrift give a mouse a 9.5 out of 10. So this has got to be a good mouse, all right? So, he, I mean, you know, he's real particular with his, with his technology reports. So take a look at the full review. It's on GameShout.com. And then you get a chance to check out this mouse. This is definitely one worth checking out. I've looked at it. I've played with it. And you know what? I've been a, uh, a, a laser mouse, you know, the Logitech laser mouse, the MX1000. I've been a very f big fan of the uh, that and the uh, and my uh, uh, my G7 for a very long time, and it's going to be hard to to you know hard to, to go back to anything else. But I like my <laughs> I like my wireless mice, you know. I'm gonna uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to get a hold of the G9 and see what that uh, plays like now. Yeah, of course, the, the Sidewinder is a, a wired mouse, and right out of the box, the wire was quite stiff, I found. Uh, 
I really needed the cord anchor to, to hold it off to the side. Uh, you know how like when you get it fresh out of the box, the the wrap the the, the mouse cord is kind of yeah. wrapped around. It's got those kinks in it, so when you hold it straight, it's like a zigzag, and it really held onto those for quite a while. So it might have been nice if it had a thinner wire like the uh, the Microsoft Laser Mouse 6000, which we also reviewed and. It had a thinner wire that was a bit nicer. I find the wire for the Sidewinder is a bit thick. Of course, it does have a lot of features, a lot of lights, a lot of stuff going on with the Sidewinder, so maybe it does need the thicker wire. But uh, it also looks really wicked. I mean, the, the two metal thumb buttons on the side and the glowing things on the bottom it, and the sharp angles, it looks mean. It looks like this kind of mouse that's going to jump up and get you. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, I think on that note, we are going to jump right back on over to uh, to Josh because he has some uh, some more gaming news. <laughs> and yes, Josh, that does look awesome. That's that's one of those that uh, that uh, I'm playing with. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> how, how could that but not I have be to write cool? A review. It is. It's awesome. Oh, that's that's true. How could that not be cool? For anyone who who's curious as to what we're talking about, I just found a an article regarding the uh, using the portal from the new Portal game, the Portal Gun. Uh, in Half-Life 2, the actual game, basically running around and uh, <laughs> basically in in the actual game, just you know using the portal. There's a YouTube video up somewhere. I'll, I'll find that and send that out to you both, uh, Mav and Soul Rift here. But uh, hell yeah, I want to give that a shot. Uh, anyway, hey, a little we'll bit have of uh, put it up in a blog. Yeah, yeah, that'd be Josh, cool. You have yeah. To put that in a blog for. Him. I'll throw that up there. I'll throw that up there to let people see. Uh, anyways, new new little rumors going on here in the Xbox 360 land. Uh, according to uh, Australian's Smart House, uh, a senior Toshiba executive in Singapore is, is uh, kind of saying here that the Xbox is going to be coming uh, with a new built-in HD DVD drive. Uh, according to them, specifically it says an Xbox with a built-in HD DVD drive is critical. They and we are working on it. Now, we're not so sure if this is the truth or not. However, uh, it, there, it's also hinting at some possible wireless networking, uh, MP3 player dock, uh, HD DVD tuner, I'm sorry, HD TV tuner. Um, I, I mean, it's just, it, some of this is rather interesting. I mean, especially if you look at how much, uh, you know, the PS3 and Blu ray uh, have been dominating the HD DVD. Yes, admittedly, they are doing a little bit better there. However, what we are looking at here is a possible step in the right direction for Microsoft and the Xbox 360. It's just, don't expect this anytime soon, as uh, they, the new device, according to Smart House, isn't going to be re uh, announced until late 2008, even early in uh, 2009, possibly at CES. So, I mean, this isn't the first time we've heard this rumor. So, until I finally hear some kind of announcement from the actual company saying, yo, we're doing this, I'm not going to say, this is good, this is go the golden So. In the meantime, it's still it's still nice to wish. I'd love to see this happen. I really would. Uh, other news: Xbox, not Xbox. I'm sorry. PS3. PS3, PS3 hardware is, changes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not just hardware changes, but hardware uh, price drops. That's right. Uh, for anyone who's been following lately, Sony had announced that there is going to be a price drop for the Sony PlayStation 3. Um, and some of us thought it wasn't going to happen until the 40 gigabytes, ha you know, had been released. However, the new 80 gig PlayStation 3 is currently $500. Yes, still a little steep in comparison to something else that's out there. However, still a better deal, in all honesty, uh, compared to the 60 gigs that were out a while back at $600. Now we have the 80 gigabyte at $500, uh, even though the little 40 gig's not going to be out until November 2nd. So, uh, also interesting, the 80 gig's the only version you're going to be able to play backwards compatibility games on a PlayStation 3. The 40 gig, not going to happen. So, is it worth the extra money? That's completely up to you. We'll see what that's what that's like once November second hits and we have the forty gig in our hands. Well, you know what's, what's also ironic is that uh, in in Canada the price of the PlayStation Three has also dropped to five hundred dollars, a drop of one hundred and seventy dollars, uh, which is an interesting change and it follows along with uh, Sony's latest uh, price plan, which is now acknowledging the the parity between Canadian and American currencies. Uh, their latest uh, games and 
add-ons being sold on the PlayStation Network, available to PlayStation 3 users, um, are also being sold at the same price for consumers both sides of the borders. Uh, for example, Everyday Shooter is $9.99 for both U.S. and Canadian users, whereas older titles released, um, for example, the uh, Weapons Master add-on for Ninja Gaiden Sigma was $2.99 in the States and $3.49 up in Canada. So they're, unfortunately, they haven't gone back and uh, rescinded their old prices. So Canadians are still paying more for older stuff. Uh, but there looks like I'm just surprised because you know the prices did drop on the uh, on on the store, and I was amazed to see them drop on the price of the console in stores. You know, five hundred dollars for both sets of consumers. Definitely quite a lot of interesting uh, things going on with the PlayStation Three. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick one up now. We'll see what happens. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Well, I guess that's what it's all about. Selling them cheaper, yeah. getting them to Josh, right? Get Josh to buy. Exactly, because, well, it's not just me, because there's a lot of people who've been like I have and said, you know what, I don't know if I want to pay the money for this. So we'll see what happens here. Maybe this will finally be the clincher that uh, finally brings out some more uh, PlayStation 3 sales here, because Sony, Sony seriously needs it. Um, not the Blu-ray. Now, don't don't get confused. What we had, what what I had said earlier here, where the Blu-ray may be be- beating out HD DVD because it's in the PS3, but that doesn't mean that the PS3 is beating out the Xbox 360. Quite the opposite. No, not in by fact. Long shot. No, not yeah. by a freaking long shot not at even all. Close. Uh, um, so yeah, so I mean, they're just two different things that just happen to correspond with each of the consoles. Uh, but for 360 owners. Uh, and nerds out there, here's another another reason to want to pick up that copy of Mass Effect. Who here loves? Have, have you anyone here ever watched? You know, Robot Chicken. How about Family Guy? Uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Angel. The movie Idle Hands. How about Batman Beyond? You guys see any of the yeah, above Batman listed Beyond. things? You guys I thought, know I this. Batman Returns. I don't know about Beyond. Well, Batman Beyond. Uh, I don't know if it's the. Uh, no, I think that was the uh, the old cartoon. But here's the yeah, interesting thing: do you, do you know what actor has in uh, you know in correspondence with every single one of those things I've listed? Adam West. Mm. No. 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 Well, he is in Family Guy, and he is in he one is of the in Family Guy. He, well, he is in the old That's Batman. All, yeah, um, I don't recognize anything else. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in Ro- Robot Chicken. But Seth Green. <laughs> uh, Seth Green is the man behind every single one of those, having done something somewhere in all of those. So any geek worth their uh, geek cred would know who Seth Green is. And, of course, here's an interesting little tidbit of news. Seth Green will be doing the voice of uh, well, the character Joker, the pilot, uh, sarcastic pilot, in the upcoming Mass Effect. I am really looking even more forward to this now because I am actually a, a big fan of Seth Green and his and his work. So, it'd be just a little bit interesting. Uh, the the funny part is Seth Green doesn't actually play video games, so I doubt that he's going to be you know even uh, you know you know really being able to uh, you know get into this. But still, quite an interesting little tidbit of news for anyone out there who is a Seth Green fan. Um, moving along to the PC side, though, you know, folks. We here talk about a lot of consoles, but we are still PC fanboys through and through, talking about our Warcraft and our Starcraft and all of those those other games. Well, anyone looking forward to Hellgate London, and I know there's a lot of you out there, uh, there is a new demo available for download over at Game Daily. Uh, so if anyone wants to go grab that Hellgate London demo, uh, you know you can choose between you can choose from two of the six available classes, um, and it's going to be uh, uh, a lot of fun. I mean, uh, Mav and I got a chance to play this at E3 last year. The game was a lot of fun. Uh, so if, oh, if you yeah. guys want to grab the demo and, and check it out, highly suggest it over at GameDaily.com. So go check that out. It's 1.5 gigs. Enjoy. Well, you know, there is one other game uh, coming to PC, and that is, of course, the PC version of Gears of War on November 6th. Uh, very, ooh, very ooh, popular ooh, ooh. Xbox 360 game. Mav wants it. Well, don't you play it on I got. 60? I play it on the 360. Okay, yes, yes, I well, do. Well, you play it on the 360, though, there's some... Uh, I'll, I'll let you finish the story, but uh, there's a reason to play it on the PC if you've already played it on 360. Right. The PC version includes a variety of exclusive content, including exciting original content, all new achievements to unlock, and ultra high resolution video vi- visuals. All of it. Is that well, what you're yes, going to say? You Josh? can say the word. I, I well, it was say the, word. the extra five chapters, an entire new act of single player 
content is being added into this game. Uh, stuff that the 360 owners do not have. Now, but this is an, this is an interesting. Um, it's an interesting thing to talk about also, right here. This also, is something that I want to get your guys' opinions also, on. Also, a new you game up. editor. You can make maps for multiplayer. That's what's cool. That is going to be really cool, and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of the maps that people can make here. But here, here's an interesting thing that I want to, I want to ask your guys' opinion on. Um, here we have uh, uh, the PC version of Gears of War coming out uh, with an exclusive... Five acts, a, a whole new, uh, I'm sorry, five chapters, a whole new act that's added into it that Xbox 360 owners do not get. It's not known if this is going to be a timed exclusive or if this is going to be only exclusive to the PC. Now, what is that, I mean, how fair is that to owners of the Xbox 360 who have paid the $60 for the game, who have played for the last year, and now are being told, oh, you know, you don't get this extra chapter? You know, and, well, they can always and, buy it for the PC. I mean, isn't that the whole point? Well, like selling it's, an expansion, it's, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a high end. Uh, I mean, come on, it's Gears of War. It's gonna be a high end, you know, uh, PC game. You know, it's not not everybody but who owns a 360 owns a really good PC. Don't you think they can still make it available on Xbox Live? I mean, it's not been announced yet, but don't you think that's a possibility? Could, would, should, but they're not that this time. That's then there's the, oh, there's the kicker. They haven't just haven't said so. They they just haven't told us yet. But they, you know that behind the scenes they they always come out a little bit extra things for us us uh, you know 360 uh, fanboys. So you know you never know. You never know. They maybe they're, they're they're back there listening to us right now, going, you know what? We should do that for our 360 fanboys. That's right. Well, you know, it's I mean, it's interesting. We're starting to see less of a trend of exclusives and more of a trend of timed exclusives as things, you know. And, and you may be correct. I mean, it may be a timed exclusive. I mean, oh, you know, now I don't think so. I I just uncovered a story um, here. According to uh, Joe Graff, a moderator of the Epic Games uh, boards, has shed some light on the situation about whether or not it will. The, the content will come to the uh, Xbox 360, and uh, it seems that this is a technological impossibility because the game has uh, apparently gone through significant hardware or at least software upgrades uh, since it was released on the 360, uh, especially to the various UT engines that power the game. And he says that uh, the, the, the two thing, the two games, the, X, the PC and Xbox 360, simply aren't compatible. And that on the 360, you can't even load some of the art packages uh, that are going to be running with the PC version of the game. Well, so here we go. Here, here is the exact reasoning: is, is that PC, you know, they're getting an, an extended version of the single-player campaign. Uh, yes, it is a year later. Yes, it is. Uh, well, actually, over a year. You know, actually, it is technically a year later now, isn't it? Um, so, I mean, is that really fair for the Xbox Xbox 360 owners? Well, you know, I, I I don't think it's an issue of fairness. I think it's like you know buying version one or version two of a of a game or or you know it, it I, it's like saying that a high definition movie is unfair to the people that bought the DVD of the standard definition. You know, it's new technology. They're selling a new product. You know, they're making a, a new version of the game. They might as well have put a different subtitle under it and called it a, a, a standalone expansion that included the original version of the game. I don't know. Still, I, it just seems like it, it's it's not unfair to the 360 users because they can always buy a PC and always buy the game, which is exactly what Microsoft wants them to do, anyways. But that PC is indeed rather expensive uh, if you want to play this with the pretty pretty graphics. Right, oh, which does true. bring me to this to the comment I made about Bioshock when it, when it came out, and I just said that as far as Bioshock is concerned, playing it on the PC is like buying a much more expensive Xbox 360 emulator. Well, yeah, your point being... <laughs> My point being that you shouldn't get I, it on PC, you should get I, it on the 360. So, I, I, I'm sure that they could, like, they probably could, Matt, they probably could re-release Gears of War for the 360 with all the updated content. They could make a, a Game of the Year edition and put all the new engine updates and re-release it on the 360. They could definitely do that. What they can't do is offer a download package for existing owners of the game to uh, get the extra content. So... It, it you know it's six of one half a dozen of the other they they can't do this because they've updated the engine they could resell it for the Xbox 360 that's always a possibility I mean they probably will if they're going to make more money doing it mm, that would make sense that would make a lot of sense uh, you know 
they're always coming out with uh, you know a few point uh, add-on for uh, you know buy a few new cars for this or or uh, you know spend a little extra for for that game you know uh, to to buy a little upgrade there and 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 so you know there's always that possibility. Well, you know what? Um, I have one last news story here, and this is an interesting one because we've often had this right. debate about PC versus console. Uh, but there's also console versus console. Uh, of course, we've no. heard that Lost Planet for the 360 is just being ported over to the PlayStation 3. You know, what the heck does that mean for everyone? And uh, now we've got uh, Electronic Arts uh, that's now officially complaining, or not officially, officially complaining, but uh, they, they are outspoken against. Uh, all of these different consoles right now because it costs so much money to develop the same game for all the different platforms available. And uh, EA is now sort of calling out for an open platform, uh, kind of like the old PC used to be, uh, where you'd have a single console, a single gaming console, that wouldn't be owned the way the, 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 you know, the PlayStation and the Xbox is, and it would be sort of an open console that everyone would be able to develop on, and he'd have a single unified hardware that everyone would have access to. Essentially, you know, he's kind of calling for the, uh, the, the benefits of a console, where everyone has the same hardware, so it's very easy to program the game, without the console wars, so you only have to make one version of your game. So even EA is kind of getting in on this uh, death of not just PC, but the current state of console gaming in, in favor of a single unified hardware architecture. That, that's interesting Whoa. that you bring that up. That uh, because if have you heard anything on uh, I, uh, ID's new Tech Five uh, software, their their new gaming engine? Oh, the one that's for the new Rage game, I think. That is correct. I, I don't know how much you know about the behind the scenes here, uh, but they're touting, and, and it actually showed this that the new ID Tech 5 engine uh, is able to real-time render in PC, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. All three of them. And the, the PS3 one is the most, uh, is the most you know, fantastical of them all, mainly because that is the, one of the hardest ones for, for people to, to, to program for, from what I understand. Um, you know, because you know, going between the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, there hasn't really been anything that's bridged the two to make a game be able to run uh, on either, you know, any, in any, way, any which way they choose. But now ID Software is you know kicked up and you know they showed back at MacWorld and they showed recently at E3 uh, a lot of what uh, this new tech engine's doing and they were running it uh, simultaneously um, in PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and PC. You know, ID's always had uh, a lot of you know they've always been like a forerunner at the the, the head of. of computer technology, especially graphics technology. I know when a lot of new features for graphics cards came out, like bump mapping, a lot of companies weren't really sure what to do with it, and then id said, you know, this is how it's done. And they put out, you know, the first games with, like, really good bump mapping and really good uh, shadow mapping, and I, I think that if they can, you know, push the technology like they are doing with this, uh, the, the, the new ID5 engine, uh, a new way of making sort of a unified engine that can run on all the platforms... Uh, it, you know, it's it's really good business to make engines. I mean, if you look at the the success of the Unreal Tournament engines and all of its incarnations, a lot of games have licensed the UT technology. Uh, and if they can make a new engine that everyone can license for all the platforms, which of course, you know, th th it's exactly what they're saying here at EA: it costs so much to redevelop their games for the different platforms. If you can just put it out once on the ID5 engine and get it on all three platforms, that saves you a lot of money, and it's going to make it a very popular option. All right. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is now, don't you? Oh, oh. Yes, right. It is time for the wild, the wet, the wonderful, the wacky news from around the world. That's right. And this is your host, Captain Maverick, with the wacky news from around the world. This is where we get to have all of our fun. Or at least I get to have fun, because I get to bring you some of the most interesting, well, yeah, I guess it's interesting, news from all over the world. In fact, we're going to start out by going to Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, this is a little story entitled, Just Passing Through. When a car crashed into the front of the police headquarters in East Windsor, Connecticut, an officer ran to investigate the driver, a 68-year-old woman. She was fine. But when she saw the officer, police said she backed up her car and 
tried to run him down, crashing into the building again. She then flipped off the cop and drove away. <laughs> well, officers pursued the car and arrested Lillian Dunn about a mile away. During the court hearing, Dunn repeatedly interrupted the judge who warned her that she was about to be gagged if she did not be quiet uh, if she was not quiet. She said, "Go ahead, shove it." <laughs> well, she she is charged with criminal attempt to commit assault, criminal mischief, and driving with a suspended license, and of course, drunk driving. Gosh, how come we saw that last charge coming from a mile away, right? <laughs> Oh, Lillian, you're a real trip. 68 years old. All right. <clears throat> well, out of Columbia, uh, Columbiana County, Ohio, this is called Watch Out, uh, sheriff's officers responded to a, re a report of an accident. Charles R. Hoyle, 34, had been riding an ATV near the town of Boardman when he hit a tree. Now, when deputies arrived, they found Hoyle was dead. Now a witness, Fred Powell, 53, said his brother, Brian Powell, 46, had been following Hoyle on another ATV on his property when Hoyle sped off full throttle and then crashed. Hoyle, he noted, was blind. Yeah, Hoyle driving the ATV, he was blind. Brian admitted that they had been drinking but not to the point of no return. <laughs> sure enough, by the time you realize you've gotten to the point of no return, there is no returning from it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay. Riding an ATV blind. Okay. Mm. Okay, I know, I know, I know. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I don't want to I don't want to come up with any of those bad jokes. Let's just move on. Foul play indeed. Months ago, when... <laughs> ah, guys. Uh, this this is another one. I uh, just... I don't know. Uh, months ago, when Reverend Gary Michael Aldridge, 51 of Thorington Road Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, was found dead, church officials urged that the community refrain from speculation until police finished their investigation. The autopsy report was finally in, and it revealed that Aldridge died alone with no signs of drug or alcohol ingestion. Of course, he was wearing two rubber suits and had bound his own hands and feet behind his back and died from accidental mechanical asphyxia or hypoxophilia. <laughs> hypoxophilia? It's not a criminal... Hypoxophilia. It's not a criminal matter at this point, according to the prosecutors. Okay, now the speculation can begin. <laughs> okay, that goes in there. Yep. Yeah, I'm already <laughs> speculating about something. <laughs> Tell me, two rubber suits. <laughs> What's the second one oh. for? Oh! I don't know! Keep the first one dry? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh, gosh. Oh, wild and wacky news today. All right. Ah, tipsy driver alerts police by mistake. This is out of our stupid criminals file. Out of Vienna. An, Aus an Austrian motorist was too drunk to change a tire. He phoned a police emergency number by mistake instead of the breakdown service and wound up losing his license. You see, he mixed up the service numbers, according to the police official of the central town of Anado. On the uh, phone, it was clear that he was highly intoxicated, and he they sent over a patrol car and... Well, he doesn't need his vehicle now because, uh, well, they took his license. So, he's done. <laughs> no need for a tire change service now. Well, the thief fails to grasp the concept of a getaway. We're taking it all the way to Berlin. A thief caught shoplifting a packet of cheese from the supermarket in Germany tried to make his getaway in a cement mixer. 
but he was quickly nabbed by police. Yeah, he was out on, on the job and he suddenly got hungry, as honest co-workers sometimes do, according to a police spokesman. When the shop uh, when a shop detective in town in the in the town caught the man stealing uh, about a two dollar and seventy nine euro or it's about three ninety eight uh, U S package of processed cheese the fifty four uh, fifty five year old broke free leaped into a cement mixer outside the shop alerted police who arrested the man when he stopped his getaway vehicle at a red light a few hundred yards away. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Trying to get, make a getaway in a cement mixer. Okay. Remember the movie that, where they used those, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, what are those, uh, mini cars? Uh, mini I, Coopers? I could see using one of these. Yeah, the mini coops. I could see using one of those, but a cement mixer? Come on. Oh, all right. Out of our, the, the, I mean, this is called scraping the bottom of the stupid criminals, uh, We're taking it from Germany all the way over to Mexico City. The suspect says he killed, but he did not eat his girlfriend. All right, get your mind out of the gutter, boys and girls. A Mexican writer is suspected of frying and eating pieces of his ex-girlfriend after strangling her. He has confessed to murdering the woman, but he denies being a cannibal. That's right. Police, they burst into... Jose Luis Calva's Mexico City apartment. Last week, they found fried human flesh on a dining table set with cutlery. (laughs) Excuse me. That calls for a... Thank you, girls. All right. They found more flesh in the refrigerator in an unfurnished... in an unfinished book by Calvo called Cannibal Instincts. The mutilated uh, body of Alejandra uh, Galena, 32, was in the bedroom closet. Whew. Calva, he told prosecutors he killed Galena after an argument, then cut an, uh, cut an arm and a leg off of her body so that he could dispense of the parts. He denies having tasted of her flesh, though. According to him, he thought it was better to cook the meat so that he could feed it to the dogs. Yummy. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Better than macaroni and cheese any day, huh? <laughs> yeah, prosecutors also s- suspect Kaba of strangling and dismembering two other women in the last two years. One victim, Veronica Martinez, lived with Kaba before her death. Kaba denied any involvement in those crimes. Galena's mother reported her missing for two weeks and said he suspected that her daughter's former lover might have been involved. Well, Kava kept books of, on black magic, and apparently he made a living selling his writings on the street. He was injured from falling from his balcony when he tried to escape police as they forced their way into his apartment. Police found copies of Hannibal Lecter films. I wonder if he had, uh, you know, fava beans. You're right, a little Chianti, right? Yeah, that's right. They, of course, the Hannibal Lecter films tell of the evil genius serial killer who eats his victims as well. A former girlfriend told police that Alba was a jealous, possessive lover who believed in witchcraft and practiced rituals, including hammering a cow's tongue with a board. (laughs) Hammering a cow's tongue with a board. Okay, now, yeah, which, which, uh, witchcraft practice, a ritual, includes hammering a cow's tongue with a board. You answer me that. I, I don't know anything like that, okay? <laughs> if any of you listeners out there have the answer to that, please drop me a note at news at gameshout.com. Please, I want to know. Uh, a witchcraft ritual that includes hammering a cow's tongue with a board, okay? Well, in our final story of the night, uh, we have a very interesting thief out there. Uh, the thief actually stole a cutout cup. This is out of the UK. A thief has stolen a life-size cud- cardboard cutout of a policeman that was intended to deter shoplifters at a supermarket. 
Police say that the cardboard cutout replica of PC Bob Malloy has been doing a great job of deterring shoplifters at the Long Eaton Derbyshire. Now, the cheeky thief paid for his groceries at the co-op store and then waltzed off with the life-size PC Malloy tucked under his arm. But Derbyshire police have yet to have the last laugh as the theft was captured by the CCTV cameras and they are confident of making an arrest. Now, thefts have fallen off 36% per month, just one, I mean, just since the PC Malloy's 2D presence was introduced two years ago, the police believe the theft may be an act of revenge. The cutout, cost about 100 pounds to produce, has been rotated between stores, uh, so it, it shows the uh, PC Malloy in full uniform with his arms folded. It looks so lifelike that some shoppers have even tried to engage the cardboard copper in conversation. Oh my goodness. Well, Inspector Andy Picken said we're using the cutout as a way of engaging uh, more with the local community, so it is a bit disappointing. We're pursuing lines of inquiry and hope to have some good news soon. Well, understanding this is a very, very important concern, Game Shout has naturally jumped into action. And so we have gotten our top investigator involved in this concern. So, can you imagine who we might possibly, possibly have investigating this theft? We must have one of the best investigative minds and talents in all of James Bond history. That is exactly right, and we're going to get him on the phone right now. As we call our friend, Sean Connery. Let's see if he's home. Come on, Sean, answer the phone. Where are you, Sean? Uh-oh. Greetings, you've reached Sean Connery. What can I do for you? Mr. Connery? Captain Maverick with Game Shout Radio. How are you, sir? Uh, Maverick, how you doing? It's been a long time since I've spoken to you. It's been a long time, but we're always glad to have you on the air. Uh, you are live and on the air on Game Shout Radio, and, and we're, we're uh, right now uh, wanted to touch base with you on this uh, this theft of the uh, cardboard cutout of the policeman. Uh, what kind of leads have you, uh, have you got on this case? Well, so far we actually have some videotape of the said criminal walking away with this life-size cutout. There's some interesting bits about it as uh, the criminal himself looks rather familiar. Um, I'm not sure exactly where I can place that face, but uh, we have some interesting audio and video surveillance of said criminal walking out of the store with the life-size uh, the cardboard cutout of the chief. Uh, police over oh. there. So uh, what I'm here doing today is actually combing uh, the premise for uh, interesting clues as to uh, who this person could possibly have been. What kind of diabolical mind would come into a food co-op and steal a life-size cardboard cutout? Well, now, I'm not quite sure, but so far we do have some clues pertaining uh, to this criminal. Uh, this scene was rather greasy when we walked in. Uh, there was a trail of, I'd like to say, I'd like to say chicken grease uh, uh, making its way from the store to a car parked outside. Uh, the interesting fact is, if you look at how the grease goes, uh, the grease goes onto the left side of the car, which for Americans is normally the driver's side. Uh, and then the grease then comes around to the other side, realizing that, oops, we're not in America. So what we have here is a possible American with uh, an, an heavy and abundant amount of chicken grease uh, walking around with uh, a, a cardboard cutout. Mm -hmm. But for what diabolical purpose? I have yet to crack the code on this one. This is this is a regular case for those the likes of Sean Connery. Well, Mr. Connery, I, I show from a third person. Yes. How, how how possibly how, how what what did the uh, culprit look like? 
Well, the compliment was rather large. Uh, when they say they put the uh, cardboard cutout under his arm, it was more like arm fat. Uh, the, the culprit himself was a, a rather heavy set, and say, I say, you heavy set in the most uh, slimmest of terms, uh, if that is even a possible way to use it. Uh, the heavy set uh, character in term uh, was, uh, was purchasing at the time a, uh, a bag of, of chicken wings uh, for. Hopefully, I would assume to for, for later consumption. Uh, and here we have today uh, uh, surveillance of it. Um, now, what I'm going to do, and this is this is the thing that really bugs the hell out of me. Really, just really pokes my trouble. Is the fact that the, the the person himself is so familiar. I can't quite place the name or the face. Perhaps you guys could lend me a hat. Mr. 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 Well, let me see if I can, I'm, what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to place the phone up against the monitor okay. and I'm going to play the surveillance tape and it's going to, it's going to illuminate some kind of, you of light. So familiar. Uh, some, I'm, I'm going to, hold on, okay, I'm clicking, I'm clicking here, just give me a one moment because I have to, I want to just pinpoint this culprit's voice as he's walking out of the store. Okay. So just let me see here, just click the button. No, he would not like to render that in quick time. No. Description sounds so familiar. Play that. No, it's, if you'd give me a second, I'm running on a Macintosh here. Oh, I understand. Bloody Mac. All right, here we go. All right, are you, are you ready? Are you game shop listeners ready for this this illuminating uh, evidence towards this case? We're ready when you are, Mr. Connery. All right, I'm clicking play now. Sweet. Tonight's totally going to be like the greatest night ever. It's going to be like, oh, my gosh, I got the cool card book shot out now, and I just get oh, oh, chicken wings. Oh, it's going to be quiet. Oh, man. Oh, here we go. All right. Did you guys hear that? that was, I know that, was the audio okay? I know exactly who that is, Mr. Connery. I know who it is. Your description fits oh. perfectly. That's Ghost Freeman. You don't you? That, that, oh, that's, that's what I remember that voice from. That's perfect. The chicken, oh, if you, the American, the chicken grease, he's always eating chicken. That's Ghost Freeman. Uh, you know, I've been trying to figure out, well, I've, I've heard that voice and seen that face for days now. I mean, I, the, the, I, I was lying in bed Please. last night with this rather saucy woman, let me tell you right now. Uh, lost lips like rubies and a, and a waist like... Ooh, I, I just, I don't, <laughs> the 70s were great, but today's women are just beautiful. Anyway, so I was lying in bed with this lash last night, uh, snogging the brains out of her, and it, it just was, it could kept bothering me. I did kept bothering uh, and, and letting me, you know, I could not perform to a peak efficiency, let's put it that way. Uh, so let me, let me just say that this has been bothering the hell out of me for quite some time now. Well, after he, uh, after, after he uh, did his, uh, his, 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 um uh, worst in 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 pursuing Gabe Newell over at Valve Software, and then and then the 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 uh, trouble that he gave you uh, two years ago. I, I'm so surprised that that you didn't recognize him right off. Uh, but that that that's definitely Ghost Freeman. I, I recognize that voice anywhere. Uh, uh, the, the, the lad has been keeping a low profile for quite some time, but I'm interested to has. find out what diabolical scheme this little bug has come up with. Never since the golden gun have I come up against such an adversary, such such a man who whose very wits and winnacles will place my very life in danger time and time again. Like a greased Alas, pig? I'm the man for this. I will take the case. Like a greased pig, let him not slip away from you again, Sean. Go get him. Ever since, ever since E3 and his, his dastardly trials, I will try to grab him and find him. Ah, I'm on the case. You know what? I, I, I have to go. There is, there is new evidence. I have to go. It's been great talking to you, Captain Maverick, and to all of you out there. I, I love, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you in. I have to go. You have a great day. Goodbye. It's always a pleasure, Mr. Connery. And with that, boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen... This is Captain Maverick, wishing you a wild and wonderful and wacky week. Absolutely wonderful. We've got Sean Connery on the case. We're going to do this thing, and we're going to get back with you and report back, because this is not going to go unpunished. Ghost Freeman will suffer the consequences, I promise you. I guarantee it. And with that, this is Captain Maverick. Well, there's Sexy Josh, 
and Saul Rift. Wishing you Good night, a everyone. week, guys. See you, guys. And see you next week. Same Game Shout time, same Game Shout channel. This is Game Shout Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. Visit GameShout.com for more info. Game Shout. Game Shout. Game Shout.